Hi guys, this is Tero from RC Thoughts speaking to you once again about the uh, RFID sensor that I made for Yeti and uh, this time I can very clearly present that the Revo bump system is now ready. Uh, let's go through some some settings and some information. Uh, you might notice from the earlier videos that uh, from the sensor values we are getting from the RFID sensor there is one more value at the at, uh, present day there's the C value uh, I have some plans on making some functions automatic one critical item I d could not do uh, I wanted to make the system 100% automatic for Revo bump users Unfortunately, that doesn't work because I can't transfer the battery name as a sensor value. So, sorry guys, you still have to write it manually. But if we go through settings and, and look what you need to do uh, regarding Revo bumps, uh, you need to write the name and the battery ID. And the battery ID is the number you can choose as the short ID number uh, in the Revo bump controller. Uh, I noticed from the tax Warren and uh, uh, Michael sent me, thanks guys, uh, that you don't use it. Uh, from now on, you do have to use it. Very simple, you enter, for example, 15 as ID, as I have made here, to one of the Revo bump uh, tags and after that Jetty will recognize it with no issues at all. Also I have two batteries uh, for example here I have the Revo uh, I named it with the text Revo in the end so we can recognize it and one is the RC Thoughts model with the ID10. Uh, this is very easy you only have to put in name and ID for every battery. If we use the system with, with the traditional RC Thoughts tags, we put the tag on the sensor and then we give some power to the system. We can see that we have now the ID is 10, there's 38 cycles, capacity is 4400 milliamps, uh, 7 cell battery and C value is 65. If we then go to the main screen, we can see here that everything looks as they used to be. A lot of capacity left. The name is there, Gensei 65CRCT, and cell count, cycle count, and the capacity. And if we go to Jetty Box, we can work with this as before. ID 10, 38 cycles, 65Cs, and so on. And as usual, when if we want to change something, let's make it more C value, for example. Uh, and when we write it, we simply just write it and tag is now written. There is no, no strange issues there. As you can see, the C value is now 75. And we can also go to main screen and, and look for that. It's now 75. Uh, some things don't happen with Revo bump. Basically, since Revo uh, bump controller writes the tags every time you, you do something in the charger, for example, the cycle count, we don't need to calculate that. And, and most important thing of all, we do not want to write anything to Revo tags. We're actually just reading them. And this is where it gets cool. Because if we use a, a Revo bump tag and put some power there, we can see that this is a, come on, log. Uh, the sensor ID, uh, tag ID is 15. I made it that on the Revo bump. Uh, controller, two cycles, 1250 on capacity, 6 cell and 45 Cs. And also since I made the, the ID 15 on the Lua app, we can see every information here on the, on the main screen. Uh, 
Now, if you try to mess it up, you can go to Jellybox and try to alter the values. You can try to write the values, uh, but you only see zeros. Uh, you can change these, for example, if you want to, but when you when you try to write them, it's not allowing you. It says I'm not writing to Revo. So you can't mess it up. So this was actually pretty easy. After all, uh, I reverse engineered the Revo bump tax data fields uh, day before yesterday, I think it was. And today I got the data field information from Revo Electrics. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, you confirmed my findings and you gave me some possibilities for the future. The whole program and how to's and everything will be up on the website during this week. So, uh, oh, and one more thing. Uh, actually, when you have used the Revo bump tax, uh, when we look up on the screen, you still get the battery log up there. So, not a bad thing. Thanks guys for watching.